Hello and welcome to another review of a film that I've seen on Mubi. This time I'm reviewing the film Labyrinth of Cinema directed by Nobuhiko Obayashi. This is my review. So it's taken me a little bit of time to work out what I think about this film and to do my review. This film took me on a very interesting journey. For the first half of this film, this is a three hour film, and it, it is a slog. For the first half of the film, for an hour and a half, I hated this film. I definitely would have stopped watching it was I not doing this review. I did consider doing the review on half of the film, um, but I'm so glad that I didn't because in the last hour of the film, I really enjoyed it. And something weird happened. Um, and then I went back and watched the first half again and I enjoyed it more. And so my views changed dramatically in that last hour of the film. Um, so it's a really interesting experience. For the first one and a half hours, I just thought this film was ridiculous. It's surreal, it's abstract, it's confusing, it jumps around like a TikTok video. It's, there's nothing to grab onto. Um, it feels like a kind of Photoshop aesthetic, bad CGI, boxes appearing on the screen, text appearing on the screen. Um, obviously, uh, I'm reading the subtitles here and I found it very confusing between the text and boxes appearing on the screen and trying to um, read the subtitles. Um, that's not a problem with the film. That's a problem with the fact that I don't speak Japanese. But that did affect my experience. What I, what I would say is that the visuals are interesting, if a bit crazy. So I wanted to be looking at the visuals even whilst having to read the subtitles and trying to understand what was going on in this film. It's very strange because there's elements of kind of Hollywood musicals and at times, especially at the beginning, this feels like a, a love letter to classic films and the kind of golden age of cinema, um, but not really. It's It's not. It kind of seduces you a bit in thinking that's what it is and then there's something kind of darker underneath, something much more serious. And um, <clears throat> clearly, many old Japanese war films are reenacted here. You do kind of get that. You do understand that eventually. Um, but I don't know any of the films. Um, you know, it, the, fil the films, this film seems to be full of Japanese cultural references and Japanese history. So my ignorance didn't help in understanding. I think if you know the references and if you know his, the, the Japanese history better, um, you maybe have a different experience with with the opening of this film. But that's, that's how it was for me. Um, there's all kinds of references and some references I, I did get. I mean, there's a very obvious 2001 Space Odyssey reference, which is which was slightly bizarre. And there's a reference to uh, an old film. I had to look up what it was called. But when I was a kid, I saw uh, a really scary film where where this woman's walking down a corridor and all, all these arms come out of the wall. And I was terrified of this. And there's a kind of reference to, to, to that. I looked it up. It's a Polanski 1965 film called Repulsion. Um, so, you know, it's kind of weird and wonderful in terms of the, the references it has in it. The CGI is really clunky and imperfect. So in that scene with the arms, the arms aren't scary at all in that film. There's lots of kind of flaws in the green screen. The, the, the chroma key breaks down a lot. And the reenacted films are all low quality. And it's really silly and it's comic. But at the same time, you, there's something serious being discussed here. So it's very confusing. 
I mean, there is a kind of underlying darkness. There's death, there's massacres, there's murder. There's some very unsettling scenes in a brothel. Um, but it's all done in a kind of slapstick way. And it's it's just a confusing mess. I I absolutely hated it. After an hour and a half, I was really frustrated with this film. But I persevered because I really wanted to do an, an honest review of it. And by the time I reached two hours, something changed. I realised that I was being emotionally drawn into this film. I realised that I actually quite liked the characters. And these characters are going on an epic journey through history, through film. Um, and that's quite interesting because the history isn't kind of recreating the historical events. It's recreating the films, recreating the historical events. And so yeah, that, that starts to feel quite interesting when you've seen this a number of times and you kind of grow this affection for the characters. It's like three hours spent with these characters you you really grow to like them. It reminded me, it's a very different film, but that five-hour Japanese film called Happy Hour from 2015, directed by Ryosuku, Ryosuke Hamaguchi. Um, by the end of that film, you love the main characters. You just want to spend more time with them because you've spent five hours with them um, and gone on this journey with them. And, and it was similar to that. Um, as the film goes on, it definitely becomes less comic and, and more serious. Um, but the key hook, the moment when I really started to feel that something had turned was when we realised that the film is moving towards Hiroshima and the atom bomb. Um, and this kind of feels like when the film allows itself to do this, it becomes less frenetic. There's a little bit more obvious story um, and less screen activity. It, it feels like there's there's a structure to the film then <laughs> that you can kind of grasp onto. Um, <clears throat> it's really interesting because obviously the, the main characters know what's going to happen uh, with Hiroshima, but the people in the films don't. Um, they're still optimistic that Japanese that, that Japan could win win the war or not lose the war, um, and so it's interesting because it's 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 about going back in time, um, but not really in a way that they can change things because they're in films where what's going to happen is already decided. They've gone back in time to the fantasy world with of the of the actors. Um, it's a lot less comedic at this point. The comedy is still there, but it, it, the film is just much more engaging. Um, and by the end, I actually felt, I won't say I was sorry it finished after three hours, but I did feel that um, I felt quite emotional, actually. It made me feel quite <laughs> emotional, which is strange. The things I really like about this film, I realise... You never really realise this at any single point, but it's actually saying a lot about cinema, about filmmaking, about acting, uh, kind of universal points. There's lots of Japanese filmmakers and poets and playwrights from history that appear in this film, so people playing them. Um, it's never really obvious, but but at the end, this all adds up to something, and I... And I really liked that. And this it has a really interesting approach towards the third world, third wall. This because the main, obviously, the main characters break the third wall by going from the audience into the film. There's a little bit the other way of people that are in the film being on the on the stage in the cinema as well. But principally, it's about the main characters being in the film. Um, and it's fun, this. It's interesting, the way they jump from film to film, the way they're suddenly in different costumes and hairstyles and they, they, they look at each other. And, and they're, they're aware that they're in a film. You know, they get scared at times that they're, they're going to be injured or killed, but they're aware that they're in a film. There's, there's some lovely points like where the music changes and they know what the music change means in terms of films. Uh, and I really liked that. 
Um, the the way that we keep seeing the same people, the same actors appearing between the scenes or the same characters appearing in the different films. This is also really interesting. You know, it's, it's, it's there's some kind of continuity between some kind of link between all of the all of the films. Um, one thing that's fascinating about this film is its use of music. The music is really manipulative in a really interesting way. So it uses cinematic styles of kind of action films, of Hollywood love stories, of, you know, the golden age of cinema. It's completely, throughout the whole film, um, manipulating your emotions through the music, music, raising expectations in terms of what we expect. You, you realise the power of music in filmmaking that you can completely change a scene by the type of music so even when the film is abstract and weird the music is telling us something and so it's all a bit of a strange mix but eventually the music emotionally started working at me working away at me so there is an element by which you do feel like you've seen a great Hollywood kind of war film love story, um, which is, you know, quite a feat. It's really, really strange. Um, the film's too odd to ever become sentimental, but I I didn't actually cry in this film, but I did feel quite emotional at several points, particularly once we reach the climax of the the Hiroshima and the and the and the day of the atom bomb it actually gets quite moving um so to conclude i think this film is a strange mix it's kind of half cynical about cinema and half in awe of the power of it but it really works and it's it's one of those pieces of the jigsaw film that you just need to pick up the pieces as you go through and then at the end they somehow came together for me. It really, as as I was watching it, especially in the first half, it just appears too silly to be making a serious point. But then you realise the, that the points have been made. At the end, you, you realise this film is actually saying a lot about war, about humanity, about art and cinema and poetry. And it's pretty amazing for that. What I what I did do was at the end of it, and I can't believe I did this. I wouldn't have believed it when I was one and a half hours into the film that I was going to do this. But I watched the first half of the film again. I watched the first one and a half hours that I hated and I enjoyed it much more the second time. It's I under I had a structure, I had a context. And it made much more sense coming back and watching watching it again. So it took four and a half hours to actually appreciate this film. But it was that was really, really worth it in the end. And it does it does raise the point in watching art house movies that, you know, I, I I always kind of look at my first instinct to a film, but sometimes you have to persevere, you have to be patient in in giving a film a chance to to work on you to speak to you and in the end this film did win me over so I would cautiously recommend this film but not if you don't have the patience to really invest some time in um, giving this film a chance to, to let the pieces work on you um, if, if you do feel you have the patience, then I actually highly recommend this film. I, I think it's potentially a, a weird, wonderful, genius film. <laughs> Incredible. Really, really worth seeing. Next time I'm reviewing the film Le Mabel from 2019, directed by Johanna Raposi. See you then.